So a question that I get a lot is uh, what happens when uh, you want to use a part out of a library but modify it in Unchain? And so we're going to uh, take a look at how to do that real quick. So for example, I've got an assembly here and I uh, have a uh, thing called a part studio. So let me go find that real quick, uh, or uh, not a part studio, but I call them part factories. So here's a part factory, for example, and let's throw um, a square tube into this design here and we'll make it uh, 14 inches long and one inch is fine. So we'll generate that. Whoop. And we'll insert the square tube. So there it is. So you'd, you'd think to yourself, well, okay, now I would really like to drill a hole in this part. So the obvious thing to try and do is to right click it and do a, um, well, I guess you could edit it in context or you could you know, open the linked document. But what's going to happen is that when you open that linked document, you're actually going to get into the part factory or into the library part. So any change you make right here will apply to every instance of that item that has been inserted out of a library file. That isn't really what you wanted to do, is it? So let's go back up a little bit and, uh, and do it slightly differently. So I know that I would like to use this part out of a, out of a, uh, one of my part factories or out of a library, but I know I'm going to make a modification to it. So what I can do instead of using this part, in fact, I'll erase this part, is I'm going to create a new part that I know I'm going to drill holes in, but I can base it off of that other part. And it's called a derived part. Um, so here's how you do that. You go to, instead of being in an assembly, you go to a part studio. And here's a part studio. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a derived part. And if you look up here, uh, you know, here's the, the usual sketch uh, and uh, the menus and such. If you go all the way out here, at the moment, it's between the make connector and the variable sort of out here in the middle on the derive, you find derived. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to take a part um, from another document and I'm just going to go and get that same part I just had. And uh, so a uh, square tube and I can give it a length, 17 inches and uh, I can generate it. I think, oh, there we go, generate it. And I can insert that square tube right here into this file. Now, it looks like I just inserted it like I did in assembly, but it's different because we're now in a part studio. And a, a good indication of what's going on here is if I look up in the features list on the, on the upper left here, you can see that rather than having an inserted part, I actually have something that is derived. It's even called out right there as derived. So here I can now go in and uh, and go sketch on this guy. And, and hey, just for kicks right now, we're gonna drill, we'll we'll make a hole in this thing. And there you go. And I can extrude it. And uh, uh, I'm going to extrude this hole and do a remove. And we'll go all the way through. There you go. So now I have drilled a hole in this part. Um, it is. It is unique to this part and this part studio. And so what it's done is it has start with a drive part, allowed us to put a sketch on it and do an extrude on it. All other instances of this square tube have not been affected. Uh, some other, uh, Now, you should realize that any changes that are made to the part factory where I got this or to the library file will end up migrating itself into this part. So if, if you go back later and change the base part, the derivations will pick up all of those changes. You can also, uh, it, it, using one of our part studio, um, or one of our part factory library files, uh, you can come back to the derived and right click it and you can actually, uh, uh, you can, edit that part, see where it says derived, edit. And it will allow you to do things like, if I decide now I want it to be 21 inches long, I can do that and this will change it and, and my changes will will endure. So you can still, um, I, I wish it, 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 it edit 
uh, change configuration is what the menu is elsewhere. Here it's called edit. Uh, but you can change, uh, you know, you can change the size, you can change the shape. Let's make this a one by two now uh, and generate that. Um, but you'll see the hole still exists. So you can go in and make some modifications to the right part. You can do all sorts of derivations on that part. And now I can go to my assembly and, and I can insert um, from the current document. I now have that, that tube available to be inserted, right? Um, very cool. Now, if you're going to import and derive a lot of different parts, uh, I will oftentimes come down here and I, I might rename this to, uh, uh, you know, have a derived part studio. <laughs> okay. And you can actually change, you can change the, the name of the square tube. This is now a, uh, uh, one, one by two with hole, right? <laughs> So all of these changes are made just to the local part. Um, one other thing I'll point out is that if I, I, can, I can have multiple parts in here. Um, and so I'm going to derive one more part and show you uh, a couple of techniques for dealing with having multiple parts in here. So I'm going to do a derive part again, and I'll use the same part factory. And let's say I need a 10 inch version of a square tube. So let's go with one by one that's 10 inches long. Okay. So there it is. I'll generate it. I'll insert it. And um, you can see over here, it showed up, but it's, it's embedded in the other part. Now it's not really embedded. What's going on here is that they are sharing the same origin, right? So there's the origin. So uh, if I come swing around here, you can see they're sharing the same origin point. So um, if you'd like to keep them separated, but still have multiple parts in a single file, uh, there's a little trick you can play. Also up on this menu is the transform. So I'm going to do a transform. And uh, I would like to transform actually the second derived part that I brought in. So uh, that part, and I can move it. So I'm going to translate it by distance. And uh, I, this will allow you to pick a direction. So I'm going to use uh, that line right there as the direction. And I'm going to just slide that over about, you know, about six inches. And so what this does is this will allow me to move a part away from the origin in a part studio. And now I have equal access to all sides of all of this. So that's just sort of a little uh, uh, life hack there. If you want to have a, a, if you don't want to create a whole bunch of, individual part studios that all have one derived part. You actually can put multiple things in the same uh, part factory just by moving it over so you get access to it. So hopefully that made sense. So uh, to create a derived part, you start out in a part factory, you do an, a derived, and that's over here in the middle between, uh, well, right now it's between mate and variable. Uh, you insert the part, you can now hack on it, uh, and do whatever you want to change it, um, and then insert that into your file. Hopefully that made sense. Um, best of luck.